So I have this new book of poetry about liberty. Um, so I'm going to read a poem from it titled January 19th, which just happens to be today's date. It's prefaced with this quote, To live honestly is to hurt no one and give to everyone his due. Those words were spoken by a man named Lysander Spooner, who lived uh, back in the 1800s and is currently buried in Forest Hill Cemetery in the Jamaica Plain section of Boston. And he shows up in the poem as well. On January 19th, in the year 1808, a man named Lysander was born on a farm near Athol, who went on to become the freest of the free thinkers of his day. His book, No Treason, promoted the ideal of freedom to refrain. And regarding contracts and constitutions, let them who sign it abide it. Another book titled Vices Are Not Crimes pierced the very heart of justice, postulating with no victim there's no need for judgment. Indeed, he challenged the government itself by forming his own mail delivery service, promising to be more reliable and thrifty. And when he was gaining too great a share of the market, the government passed a law giving itself exclusive right to deliver mail, as governments fare poorly with competition. Yet undaunted, Lysander continued his lifelong refusal to bow down before despotism, and his 79 years on the planet jibed with that popular refrain, you go your way, I'll go mine. And upon his grave is etched his place in history, champion of liberty. On January 19th, in the year 1809, a man named Edgar was born in Boston, he became a renegade writer, scoffed at by the literati of his day, who preached the role of literature, was to educate and enlighten whereas Edgar chose to frighten his readers with tap, tap, tapping poetry, bringing a chilling meter to one's dreams and direful stories, making one feel doused with disquieting vibes that won't fly off no matter how much one shudders. Rumors of his turning to the green muse for inspiration merely add to his anomalism, failing to phase his devotees who continue to absorb those resonant narratives with predestined worse fear endings, which only end on the page, never in one's imagination, as the beating of that telltale heart still can be heard on many a dreary night. Now it's curious how two such beings, born on the same date, one year apart, turned out to be such controversial individualists. However, the astrologers all nod in agreement, saying that one's deportment is due to the alignment of the planets on one's day of delivery. But you can include me among those skeptics who say, poppycock, it's mere coincidence. So when, on January 19th, a century later, a girl named Janice is born in Dallas, grows up to be a free spirit, flaunting her vices, singing and screaming, take another little piece of my heart, I don't pay it any mind whatsoever. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, this is a, I picked up, recently picked up a book of poetry by Fernando Pessoa, a um, Portuguese poet who is, according to the back of this, the greatest 20th century writer you've never heard of. Um, he's actually quite famous in Portugal. There's a statue to him in Lisbon. He was noted for um, writing from the perspective of different personalities. He invented over 80 personalities, and it isn't just pen names. He created entire backstories, birth dates, life histories, and then would write as that person. It's sort of a um, poetic version of um, method acting. He also wrote as himself um, a few times. So this is one of the pro poems that he wrote in his own voice. It has no title. Seagulls are flying close to the ground. They say this means it's going to rain, but it's not raining yet. Right now there are seagulls close to the ground flying. That's all. Likewise, when there's happiness, they say sadness is on its way. Perhaps, but so what? If today is full of happiness, where does sadness fit in? It doesn't. It belongs to tomorrow. When it comes, then I'll be sad. Today is pure and good. The future doesn't exist today. There's a wall between us and it. Enjoy what you have, drunk on being. Leave the future in its place. Poems, wine, women, ideals. Whatever you want, if it's what is, is for you to enjoy. Tomorrow, tomorrow, be tomorrow what tomorrow brings you. For now, accept, be ignorant, and believe. Keep close to the ground, but flying like the seagull. Obrigado. The writer uh, Judith Valente once described poetry as anamkara, or soul friend. And um, Mary Oliver's work, uh, some, sorry. Major influence, um, and I wanted to read today, if I can, a poem, poem of hers that was, for me, a life-changing uh, Anamkara uh, from her dream work collection that she published in the 80s. It's one of those books, I think, if anybody asked me, you know, if there was one book you could take with you to an island, um, it would be Mary Oliver's dream work. And this poem, it has some of her really great iconic poems in it, like Wild Geese and The Journey and lovely poem about Stanley Kunitz and her neighbor from Provincetown. And, um, Today, I'm going to read from that collection, uh, Starfish. Starfish. In the sea rocks, in the stone pockets under the tide's lip, in water dense as blindness, they slid like sponges, like too many thumbs. I knew this, and what I wanted was to draw my hands back from the water. What I wanted was to be willing to be afraid. But I stayed there. I crouched on the stone wall while the sea poured its harsh song through the sluices while I waited for the gritty lightning of their touch, while I stared down through the tides, leaving where sometimes I could see them, their stubborn flesh lounging on my knuckles. What good does it do to lie all day in the sun, loving what is easy? It never grew easy, but at last I grew peaceful. 
all summer my fear diminished as they bloomed through the water like flowers like flecks of an uncertain dream while i lay on the rocks reaching into the darkness learning little by little to love our only world this song is very short i couldn't make it any longer <laughs> i tried but it just it's the nature of the song so you just have to if you can put your brain in the place where you've already been listening to it for two minutes it should work <laughs> Summoned by the tide Must now surrender all The hidden part will take it to And sink beyond recall When I was new I never thought eclipse Could come so slow Still yet could I have ever dreamed How deep the rot could go But in the end I have no fear This place is not unknown I'll quickly learn its stratagems I'll soon Make it my own. Thank you. Um, I recently released this new book, Gabriel's Light, Spiritual Poetic Musings, and I'll be doing a reading from it today. Um, I created this book to recognize and counteract all the stress and angst in the world today. We're constantly bombarded by the me social media with all this negative outer chatter, but we're also bombarded with our own inner self-talk that tends to be negative from morning till night. This book is a self-help book, and it asks you to notice and acknowledge all of this negative chatter, because it's reality. But then it also asks you to release all of this negativity, go within, find yourselves, find out who you truly are and have those difficult inner conversations to find out what your purpose is here on Earth. And so I ask of you who would listen to yourselves, how will you serve? How will you choose to transport your, transport your unique, beautiful light into the universe? And on that note, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote called Clutter. Release our hurried lives from all this clutter accumulated throughout the years. Let us live in the moment given without foolish regret for what's meant to be as it is. Acceptance of those gifts that are presented today liberates our souls to carry on, to receive the flow of the day with all its lessons of love and compassion. We are all on our paths searching for our true selves. If we but stop and listen to the heartbeat of the earth with our hearts instead of our egos, we will know it all. There's a certain disconnect that's happening all around us. If we but learn our worth, we will be shielded from all that does not matter. We will indeed see the light as it was meant to be seen in all its purity. Connections will appear for our eyes alone when we are ready to envision the purpose of the revelation. We can only assimilate as we go, learning from the past, making the links that bind us to one another, forever karma. 
We are the essence of many, interlaced in one luminous force over many lifetimes. In the end, we will attempt to right the wrongs, to learn unconditional love without pretenses, without the roadblocks set up by those who do not understand, or maybe those who do and need us to veer off our depleted, worn-out paths. We will acquiesce eventually, either in this lifetime or the next. Why not now, I ask you, so we can truly live our purpose and hear our voices loudly and clearly, just pure intent of what could be if we would but let go of all that clutter that is holding us hostage against ourselves. As we throw out that old item or donate to a charity of choice, as we cast our old clothes off because they don't fit or are out of style, we need to think about our inner selves and do the same. Only then will we be able to claim who we really are without fail. Thank you. I spent 30 years in the warm, sunny Southern California city of Los Angeles. And it gave me perspective on what I had left behind after 18 years in New York. Don't ask me why this came to me in the middle of an 80-degree day, but it did. Urban winter bottoms out in February. Twilight days of bone-cold overcast. Indoors man-made deadlines shriek for forecasts of the quarter after next. But outside, it's just another Tuesday. All that flourishes is mildew. Sleet sharpens tiny knives against the face, and every cul-de-sac and alley is saturated to the curbs with resignation. The city harbors sullen anger at winter just for being there. In revenge, it sucks out life and gives back rage. Native energy pent up and itching to get out. Nothing's free in this town. One desperately neutral day, you laid a long white box in my arms. Crisp tissue paper sheltered long green stems. Tulips of robust red and palest yellow. Delicate irises in purply blue. Carefree orange gold and crimson puppies. Balloons of hope in my heart, bright kites of love. Valentine's Day, 1969. Thank you. If you wonder why I cry, at the fireworks on the 4th of July. You should have known the man who looked a lot like me. If you wonder why I cry at the fireworks on the 4th of July. You should have known the man who looked a lot like me. Eighty years ago, a red-headed baby was born. The first son in an Irish couple's life. Ten days later, a baby girl was born in the very same room who would have ever known she'd become his wife if you wonder why i cry at the fireworks on the fourth of july you should have known the man who looked a lot like me Sixty years ago, a sailor was on leave. 
10 days back on land and back at home. A nine day engagement for a wartime wedding. Then the sailor was back at sea and the bride was alone. 40 years ago, the couple loved each other. Between the fights they had known for years. He often came home drunk. If he came home at all, she lived on cigarettes and milkshakes and tears. If you wonder why I cry at the fireworks on the 4th of July, you should have known the man who looked a lot like me. Red hair like a penny, green eyes like the sea after a storm blown through. Brave and complicated, funny and outrageous, he loved everything and everyone he knew. Twenty years ago, a family walked the halls of a hospital they missed the firework show. Eight long years of illness finally took his life. Oh, but nothing and no one could steal his soul. If you wonder why I cry at the fireworks, on the 4th of July, you should have known the man who looked a lot like me. You should have known the man who looked a lot like me. Who looked a lot like me. Thank you. But haunt 
to myself Cause I know you I used to be something else And please don't go where I'll haunt our home Till our love comes back We danced to the ticking clocks And I couldn't keep up And yes, it's scary sensing something gone But I'd rather be haunted than want to move on Cause I know you, I used to be something else And please don't go where I'll haunt our home Until our love comes back alive Thank you Yeah.